Hello, my name is Ellen Dean and I'm coming to you from Ellen Dean Towers um, and today I'd like to talk to you about panic attacks and anxiety and when I say talk to you I don't mean dictate to you I mean talk to you because believe me last year I was suffering um, very serious panic attacks and anxiety in fact I'm sure it was a panic disorder not just now and again a panic attack but that's how it started one day a panic attack, then nothing for ages, then all of a sudden, one after the other. And I didn't know why it was happening. So you go along to your GP and you have all the tests and they send you um, to see different specialists or whatever. And then you realize that, yes, you are having panic attacks and you're anxious. And a panic attack can either come out of the blue or it can creep up. Not, not two people are the same. So when you look at it, and which I did, and I've been researching it for quite a long time, and ever since I knew I was having them actually, which was uh, a year ago this month. So I started to research it, and I thought, well, if people can cure themselves, you know, if you know enough about something, then you're halfway there to curing yourself. And I'm not saying everybody can cure themselves of anxiety and panic attacks because it just doesn't happen overnight. Never mind what the, you know, people tell you, it doesn't. You've got to work at it like anything else because anxiety and panic are a learned thing. So you have to unlearn it. And the way you learn it is you have two little almond-shaped organs deep in the brain called the amygdala and they act like a computer which means they store things they store your memories and whether they're good or bad so if you have a panic attack it's going to store the bad unlike a computer well no like a computer actually a computer when you work on it the information you put in tap 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 stays there until you delete it same with the amygdala. The information that goes in stays there until you delete it. Except it isn't as easy as pressing a switch on a computer. So you've got to learn how to do it. Now, once your GP said to you, um, you're having panic attacks and anxiety, you've got nothing serious going on, then you can put things into practice to help you on your way to recovery. And I don't believe everybody is cured in a matter of seconds, overnight, a week, you've got to do it gently because you don't want these panic attacks to come back. And if they do, you have to know how to control them because it's no good standing in a supermarket queue. And I'm naming supermarkets because when I've read up on the research, a lot of people seem to have panic attacks in a supermarket queue. I don't know why, unless they fear the bill at the end of it, but fear, if you fear that queue before you actually go there, it's the happy. <laughs> Hap, sorry, apprehension of being in the queue because last time you had a panic attack. So you think, uh oh, I'm going to have another one. Not necessarily the case, but your mind, your amyg amygdala, thinks you are. So then you do because you do what it says. The next thing is um, you might not have a panic attack for no reason. You could have an illness, you could be on medication. That can cause anxiety or panic can cause dizziness. Now last year I didn't know that I had something called labyrinthitis which is a virus and it affects the inner ear, your balance. So I was away with the mixer. I was like on a waltzer spinning at a thousand watts or a thousand revs whatever they do, washing machine, a thousand revs and I couldn't understand why this was going on and I thought I was doomed until I went to the uh, see the, the GP. In fact, I went a few times, and then I thought, one of these days I'm gonna walk in here and I'm gonna see a name on a seat, my name on a seat in the doctor's waiting room because I'd been a few times. Anyway, I thought, right, we'll carry on with this research. Now, labyrinthitis, if you don't know anything about it, is part of the herplex, herpes simplex, 
virus, which is shingles, chickenpox, cold sores, flu, things like that. So if you've had that virus in your body at one time, it could be laid dormant. And if you have any stress or a flu or anything like that, it can cause it to erupt in big time, which it did with me. Plus, there's something else that very few people even know about because it's never talked about is this little muscle here in your chest and it's called the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Now I found that by accident and I went to have a look at it now with a physiotherapist and I thought blimey all of these symptoms are the same as when you have a panic attack and because this muscle starts here and, and goes up here to the neck it means if you turn your neck sharply to the right or to the left or look up, it can cause dizziness, which can cause you to panic because you wonder why you've gone dizzy. Then you feel faint and your whole body just goes to pot, which is what happens in a panic attack. Then I found out that you can easily rectify these uh, symptoms that come from this particular muscle. But because I'm not a physiotherapist and I'm not a psychologist, I'm going to put the links in to the video, uh, underneath the video in the description. You can go and check it out yourself and the amygdala. You'll be surprised at what you find. So, this muscle can be affected if you've had whiplash injury for, you know, for uh, even years ago. You could have had it. Or it could be continuous wear and tear, like if you're lifting your arm and carrying things, you know, even your shopping or something like that so it can be easily rectified then you've got to work on your panic attacks that that's caused so it is easy to do sometimes but once you know the cause you're halfway there so that's the that, that, the hard bit is finding the cause the easy bit and the I'm hoping it's a fun bit is trying to put it together and getting on with your life because sometimes with panic attacks you can be housebound I'm not kidding housebound I couldn't go to the garden gate last year at this time it was horrendous um, and as I say I thought I was just doomed that was it life over you know panic attacks duh, duh, duh. however since then I found um, you can buy books mindfulness workbooks things like that got mine at the works uh, it was only about 4 99 best book ever and all you do is you, you fill it in, you visualise what you want to do. Say if you want to go out and do shopping, you visualise yourself going first. And then when you do go, it doesn't surprise you anymore. So you don't panic. And if you do, you've got the tools to stop the panic. Like that. Brilliant. Just takes some getting used to, I've got to say. The other thing, um, a lot of people don't talk about anxiety and panic attacks. They don't talk about it when they've, they're they having them. And I think it goes back to a 19th century thing when if women had these symptoms, panic, anxiety, they were said to have the vapours. But that was good because they were all higher class people, you know, and they all, if they had the vapours, that was a good thing. Don't ask me why. But there's another thing that is coming into my mind and I just can't remember what it was because I'm not, I've got no script here, I'm just talking off the top of my head. If you, if what I want to do uh, with these videos, I'm going to make some more, that's if you want to see any more, um, about, I, w I want people to contact me who have had anxiety and panic attacks, who've come through the other side and don't have them anymore, to get in touch and if we make, you know, have a question and answer se session or something like that, we can even have a Facebook group and people can get in there and actually talk about it. And I thought about, you know, setting a little group up or something like that. And we can talk about the positive side of things. What, are, what have you learned, you know, from, from having these panic attacks and anxiety? Because all, all it is really is you've saved the stress. You can, you can save stress all your life. I've been one of these people who... I go through stress at the time. I, had, I ran two successful businesses and I was going 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Didn't have time to relax really, which you don't when you have your own business. And um, it, it's a bit like a deposit account. 
the stress goes into this account and then when the stress is all gone it erupts and then the anxiety comes out there's all the stress that you've saved up tips over just like your cup of tea would if you kept filling the cup and didn't take it out so it tips over and then away you go boom so what, I, what I'm trying to do now is work through my mindfulness workbook um, go out with friends again because what you do you stop going out places you feel alienated people don't seem to want to be there in case they catch it off you and I don't think they do I don't think it's a catching thing anxiety although I don't know because once over I used to have a phobia about snakes and my sister has the same phobia except one day I was out walking on my own uh, up in Scotland and I came across a nadder next to my foot and I thought oh no what's this but I didn't panic funny enough the snake went that way and I went that way and nothing happened I didn't panic nothing so I thought well if you can get over something you've feared all your life surely you can get over the panic attacks because that's all it is it's fear feeding fear and when I, again when I say that's all it is it is but you might have something underlying that's caused it and then you've got to work out what it is and put it right so the, uh, um, that your um, amygdala remembers all the good times if it does remember bad times you can deal with it so that's what we're going to do in the next video um, as long as people send questions I'm quite willing to research and, and find out answers as long as you work with your GP as well because I don't want to say I'm an expert because I'm not it's only what I found myself so there's no overnight cure it, it, it's it's all mind over matter they say but it's getting your mind oh I'll tell you what it was I was going to say apparently a lot of creative people um, are more susceptible to having panic attacks because they've got the imagination and you imagine the danger before it's even there that's why I write fiction I imagine things and a lot of writers will probably say oh that's me artists create musicians create so they are in the, 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 the higher bracket to have a panic attack and anxiety attack entertainers people like that who always like to be at the top of their game are more susceptible so hopefully you've enjoyed this little chat and um, we'll see you next week please send me your questions this is me Ellen Dean signing out from Ellen Dean Towers all the best <laughs>